This video will demonstrate the assembly of the rigid bronchoscope. There are at least four different types of rigid bronchoscopes currently available on the market. Stortz, Wolf, Efford Dumont, and Limol, previously known as Brian. It is important to know the type of rigid bronchoscope that you will be using as assembly and usage can vary significantly between manufacturers. This video will demonstrate the assembly of the Limol or Brian rigid bronchoscope and tracheoscope as well as the basic accessories. There are five sizes of ventilating bronchoscopes that are color-coded based upon the internal and external size diameters. You can see that the bronchoscope has side ventilating ports. This permits ventilation into the contralateral lung when the bronchoscope is in either the right or left main stem. There are four non-ventilating tracheoscopes that are again color-coded based upon their size diameters. There are several necessary accessories. These include silicone red caps with different size holes depending on the type of telescope being used, mouth guard, silicone blue caps for the necessary side port adapters, metal operator for single and double use accessory, universal instrumentation barrel, anesthesia connector, and anti-fog solution for the telescope lens. A telescope of the appropriate length and their corresponding connectors is then chosen next. Cords for the telescope light source as well as the camera lens are also needed. These may look different depending on the type of processor that is in your hospital. This camera lens is designed for a Stortz processor. Finally, gray handle cup forceps used for tissue biopsy and white handle crocodile jaw forceps for stent manipulation and a suction catheter complete the necessary components. The size of the rigid bronchoscope can be found on the proximal end of the scope. This is the largest bronchoscope with an internal to external diameter of 12 to 13 millimeters and has a yellow stripe at the proximal end of the scope. The black scope has an internal to external diameter of 11 to 12 millimeters. The red scope has an internal to external diameter of 9 to 10 millimeters. The green scope has an internal to external diameter of 7 to 8 millimeters. The blue scope has an internal to external diameter of 6.5 to 7 millimeters. The rigid tracheoscope is also similarly color coded. Here you can see the length difference between the tracheoscope and the bronchoscope in the presence of side ventilating ports on the bronchoscope. This is the largest tracheoscope diameter with internal to external diameter of 12 to 13 millimeters and is marked with a yellow stripe on the proximal end of the scope. The black scope has an internal to external diameter of 11 to 12 millimeters. The red scope has an internal to external diameter of 9 to 10 millimeters. The green scope has an internal to external diameter of 7 to 8 millimeters. Assembly of the rigid scope begins with attaching the anesthesia connector to the universal instrumentation barrel. The two pieces lock together over the corresponding threads and are secured to prevent dislodgement. Then attach the rigid barrel. The black 11-12 millimeter ventilating bronchoscope barrel is chosen in this example. Expose the black dot on the distal end of the instrument barrel by rotating the locking mechanism. Align the black dots on the scope and instrument barrel and insert the scope until it clicks into place. Rotate the locking mechanism to secure the attachment. This step is important to prevent accidental dislodgement of the scope. 
There are various types of instrument accessory ports that can be used. This is a single port accessory adapter. This is a double port accessory adapter. This is a telescope plus instrument port adapter. Once you have chosen the type of accessory port you will need for the procedure, attach it to the instrument barrel. A single port has been chosen in this example. A silicone blue cap is then attached to the accessory port. This cap can have a hole to allow passage of a suction catheter or forceps, or may not have a hole to help facilitate a closed ventilating system. Then attach a red silicone cap to the lip of the anesthesia connector. If you are going to use jet ventilation, you will need a jet ventilation adapter. This will connect to the bottom portion of the anesthesia connector. If you are going to use controlled ventilation delivered by the anesthesia machine, you will attach the tubing to the connector at the bottom aspect of the anesthesia connector. Next, you will need to assemble your telescope. Use the zero degree telescope for intubation and entry into the trachea. There are small connectors that attach to the telescope. Ensure that these are attached. Next, attach the camera to the lens on the telescope. Then attach the light source cable to the connector. Insert the telescope through the hole in the silicone cap until approximately 5 centimeters of the telescope remains protruding from the proximal end of the scope and the tip of the telescope is safely covered by the barrel of the bronchoscope. The following is a demonstration on insertion of tools into the rigid bronchoscope. This is not exhaustive, but it gives a brief overview of how various instruments can be inserted into the scope. This is the gray handled cup forceps, most commonly used for tissue biopsy. This is the white handled crocodile forceps used for stent manipulation. This is the suction catheter. If you are using an open system as with jet ventilation, you will remove the silicone red cap and insert the telescope and gray handle forceps into the bronchoscope. The suction catheter can be inserted into the single accessory port. The suction catheter can also be inserted into the proximal portion of the bronchoscope along with the forceps and telescope if desired. This is the entire assembly for an open gent ventilation system. Suction catheter, telescope, and gray handle forceps.
If you are using a closed system, choose the silicone red cap that has two holes allowing for both the telescope and forceps to be passed into the bronchoscope. This is the entire assembly for a closed system. Suction catheter, telescope, and gray handle forceps. The next steps involve the assembly of the tracheoscope. Select the desired size tracheoscope. In this example, the 11 to 12 or black tracheoscope is chosen. Align the black dots on the distal end of the instrumentation barrel with the black dot on the proximal end of the tracheoscope. Click the scope into place and rotate the locking mechanism. As with the bronchoscope assembly, ensure that the connection is secure. Choose the shorter 36 centimeter telescope. Attach the connector. Then attach the camera. Finally, attach the light source cable. Attach the desired silicone red cap. Insert the telescope. Insertion of instruments, whether using an open or closed system, is identical with the tracheoscope as with the bronchoscope. It is important to check that the camera and light source is functional prior to starting the procedure. Insert the telescope into the bronchoscope. Advance the telescope until it protrudes from the distal end of the scope. Adjust the focus on the camera. Next. Pull back the telescope until it sits just proximal to the visible ring and you can see the entirety of the ring. The bevel should be anterior at the 12 o'clock position. The zoom feature can also be adjusted. Maximal zoom is suggested, but this is operator dependent.